first uh, will be uh, Sam Van Dam. Sam, Van, Sam is an architect um, who's built gorgeous houses all over New England, and as was mentioned earlier by Ted, uh, wrote his undergraduate uh, thesis on Wheelwright, um, which is, uh, I guess, until, until somebody tries to do you better, the, the definitive uh, work, or one of the definitive works. Uh, Sam will talk about those 30 years uh, as, as an architect in Boston. Um, I'm actually uh, going to try to put EMW in the context of architectural history. So I have to ask, is there an architectural historian here? <laughs> oh my god, okay, feel free to step in and correct me because I am an architect and I had to dredge up my thesis and figure out what I could say. And what I really want to talk about is, uh, is uh, Wheelwright as a really a very typical uh, 19th century born uh, historical eclecticist. And there are legions of architects out there. You know, if you go to Princeton, on the, on the far end of, of historicism, uh, you, can, you can see the work of Cram and Ferguson, you know, the Gothic style. You go back to the beginning, before around the Civil War, our great hero here is Henry Hobson Richardson. Richardson really wasn't appreciated in his time. Um, but within those bookends of the historicist movement, um, there were some pretty remarkable uh, practitioners. I think Wheelwright was among them, certainly for the Lampoon. But just a few examples, almost chosen at random from the books that I happen to have, uh, of what this was all about. This is the um, Westminster Cathedral. This is not Westminster Abbey. This is the Roman Catholic <laughs> Cathedral. And in this case, uh, the architect was actually told what style that he was supposed to adapt for the building. And he was sent off by the diocese to look at Hagia Sophia and to look and go to Ravenna and look at the churches with the mosaics. And he was, he was sent to St. Mark's and he came back and he did this. So on the West Coast, anybody know Bernard Maybeck? I'm just curious because every architect loves Bernard Maybeck. He's one of my favorite architects. Maybeck on the West Coast was doing, sure, mission style redux. This is what it was about in those days. Architects, you know, Corbusier had yet to be born. What if I'm given a commission as an architect can I do that fits my program? This is the, uh, still extant by the way, the uh, Berkeley Faculty Club, which I visited last year. It's a beautiful building and uh, Maybeck, who did all kinds of really interesting uh, projects, many of them houses, uh, chose the mission style. And so it, it, it fit very well with his program. Frank Furness, anybody know Furness? Yeah. Furness really was not well thought of when he was alive. As a matter of fact, I don't know if the story is true, but he was thought to have said on his deathbed that he would like to line all of his clients up and shoot them. <laughs> and I, ha I happen to think that Furness is one of our greatest eclectic architects. This is the University of Pennsylvania Library. It's now the Fine Arts Library. He did some really weird stuff that was torn down, but he was very inventive. And what I'd like to say about Furness, as opposed to other architects, is he was an inventor. He was an eclecticist who took bits and pieces of historic styles, in this, in this case, some Gothic, you know, some medieval, and he, he did really wonderful compositions. And, and he, was a, he was, I think, one of the best around. So there are three people on to Wheelwright. Uh, Wheelwright, uh, his career, uh, you know, a city architect, uh, Harry Cobb's going to talk more about that. This was an initial uh, a house that he did in Newcastle, New Hampshire. I just show it because he started out doing small projects, medieval things, stone tower. You know, I'm, I have a client. 
The clients on the ocean, you need a tower to look over the ocean. The medieval uh, notion fit. This is probably, and Harry's going to show some other slides of this, this is probably, I think, the best fit of a style and a program. Why? Anybody know? Does anybody know what the building originally was? That was the fire, that was the fire station, the, the, the headquarters for the fire department. Why would you have chosen the town hall of Siena for the fire station? Anybody have a guess? This is a programmatic thing. Dry the hoses. That's, that's one. Anybody else? Slide down the pole. See what's going on? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. No. Uh, fire department and people, firefighters learn to go up and down smoke-filled towers. They learn to repel off of towers. So, you know, the, 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 the city told them, hey, give us something that's got a tower. So, gosh, what am I going to do? Town Hall of Siena. There is um, the, I think it's the train station in, um, forgive me because I haven't looked at my thesis for a while, Waterbury. Waterbury, Connecticut. Another, in that case, that was about looking around. That was about seeing the train come down the track, I suppose. So Wheelwright, Wheelwright had at his, in his toolbox, if you will, an extraordinary ability to grab a, a style to suit his his needs. This is the head house, which I noticed Harry also has a, uh, a photograph of over in South Boston. This is a sort of late beer garden style. Beer garden gothic. Uh, 1897. You know, what are you going to do if you're doing a, 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 a recreational building? We'll go for the Swiss German beer garden. And he did it really well. I mean, uh, so I think that's a, that's a really nice precursor to uh, the Lampoon Building. Okay, uh, if you're going to do a duck house and the headquarters for the, uh, the park service and the Fenways, what style do you choose? Interestingly, there were a lot of buildings for recreation that were done in the Japanese style. I don't know why. If you've been to Japan, you know that they love their ponds. Maybe that was it. Uh, this was actually a duck house and an administrative building on the fence, and it burned. It was wood. Beautifully done. Uh, I'm sh you know, Edward Bigelow came back with all of his Japanese prints, and somehow Wheelwright, as many people were artists, Whistler and so forth, were looking at the Orient. So Wheelwright figured, well, i got to do a duck house. Let's go to Japan. Um, when, when I did my thesis, I spent about... I think I must have logged about six or seven weeks underground just looking for what I thought was the perfect, you know, picture of what Wheelwright saw and that was it. It really turns out that Dutch castles, there are a lot of Dutch castles which have these towers and these little back pieces to them. Uh, when, the, when the trustees bought this uh, trapezoidal site, Wheelwright must have thought, God, what, what am I going to go for here? And he traveled, you know, to, uh, to Holland. He actually purchased himself the built-in bed and the sanctum. He purchased all of the Delft tile. So he was wandering around looking at stuff. And um, I was fascinated, actually, really, by Michael's drawing of the windmill and the, uh, the tower ahead of it, because he must have had this theme in his head in advance somewhere. And anyway, after about the sixth week of wandering around the fog, um, I found this little cartoon, and I thought that was, that was pretty good. But the best one is this. And um, that's on the, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be Dutch, Van Damme. Seymour Slive called me Mr. Van Damme. I love that. Anyway, it's on the Moss River. Is anybody Dutch here? Are we pronouncing it correctly? There's a tower on the Moss River. I think that's what he saw when he was traveling around, or something, many things like it. And he said, that's my man. And I think, I think this is a wonderful story about an architect, you know, not, he, he, was, he was heading down a path we know which was a minor path. There were people beginning, you know, there were, there were, the, there were the, uh, the uh, Impressionist painters, modern architecture, but between the Civil War and the First World War, you know, 1909 when the cornerstone was laid, uh, he, um, he practiced his craft in a remarkably broad fashion. And I think that the Lampoon is by far the best building. So thanks very much. Thank you.